Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 496. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to have a little fun with this topic. I'm calling this Bubbles, Cycles, Bitcoin, and Cannabis. And the reason I'm calling it that is because part of my work is to study bubbles and cycles. In fact, that's one of the things people really tell me they like the most. And I have studied bubbles and cycles for a lot of my life. It was something that I noticed when I was much younger. I saw it in the oil industry when I was younger and was looking at different careers and things. Oil was going crazy and then real estate was going crazy and then the stock market went crazy. There seemed to be certain areas of the economy that kept having really strong growth, stronger than the other areas. And then there were times when those areas had terrible times, when they had the bust part of the cycle. Part of that was when tax laws changed for real estate limited partnerships, which had been extremely strong. And then all of a sudden the tax laws changed. And that meant that these partnerships were no longer tax deductible. The tax deductions weren't allowed anymore. People that had taken tax deductions, there were some improprieties that were going on in the industry. And there was a lot that was going on that sort of had gotten very frothy and very much into a bubble. And suddenly overnight with the tax law changes, it just shut down that whole part of the industry. A lot of general partners, developers went bankrupt. It was a crazy time and caused a horrible recession. So I have noticed these booms and busts and times in the economy when things are great and then times when things aren't great. I also remember when silver went through the roof, when the Hunt brothers tried to corner the market on silver and the price of silver soared to $50 and then plummeted. I remember when the internet bubble was going crazy and tech stocks were going through the roof and we're up 100% in one year, and then the next year down 70%. These are things that happen over and over and over. And there are very common things that happen when you see the peak of a bubble. And it makes it something that you can look for. It makes it something you can identify. It makes it something you can anticipate. And when everyone wants to run in at the top and everyone's crowding in, that's usually a good sign that we're close to the peak of a bubble. About a year ago, I started to see some bubble-like characteristics of Bitcoin. And whether you're a Bitcoin investor or not, that's not really the subject of this podcast. The subject is really about how to identify characteristics of bubbles and to see when maybe they're at the peak of a cycle. And it was about exactly a year ago when I came across someone on the internet who perfectly was expressing what I'm trying to teach you today about the peak of a bubble. He was very excited about Bitcoin. He was wanting to invest and was invested and was expressing how everybody seemed to be invested, everybody seemed to be doing well, and everyone else seemed to be getting rich. And that kind of language and that kind of enthusiasm is what can sometimes signify the peak of a bubble. So I'm going to play the recording for you. I'm not making fun of this person. I don't know this person. I'm not going to identify him or his Twitter handle, but My point is just as a teaching process to have you listen to his enthusiasm, listen to how he seems to think everybody is in on this investment, and it makes him want to jump in all the more. 
I have to say there is explicit language that he uses. There's swearing. This is probably the only Be Wealthy and Smart podcast I'll, I'll ever have to mark as explicit language, <laughs> but I will because of the language that he uses. So enjoy listening to this. It's about four minutes and he is expressing his enthusiasm for getting in, which is just exemplifying the fact that there's a lot of frothiness going on and there's a lot of excitement. And this might be the thing to look for to see if we might be at the peak of a bubble. So here we go. Uh, I got to talk Bitcoin real quick. So I am a Bitcoin investor as of like, I don't know, three weeks ago. It's because everyone in our office, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that, cryptocurrency. I don't even know what the fuck any of it means. I don't even know what a Bitcoin is. You like mine Bitcoins on the ground on the internet? Uh, think about that. Like you literally mine for them online. Like and then one pops out of the internet like oil, like all of a sudden on the internet, like if you have enough power, so enough like internet speed, like you have all these wires and cables and shit, you can find underground Bitcoins on the internet. I literally don't know what that means. It sounds like Mario Brothers, where you find, like, you hit something and a mushroom pops up, except it's a Bitcoin, you grab it, but it's not real, but it's worth right now, today, everyone's talking, $11,000. I tried to buy Bitcoin, it was, like, $6,000 three months ago. It just keeps going up, keep going up, keep going up. There's not enough stock. You get people, nerds, I guess, out in the street, on the black market, finding these things, and like, oh, there's a rock on the internet, and they, you know, underneath the rock, there's a Bitcoin. It's like that game, the... Uh, that emoji game that was half real, half fake. Like there could be, for all I know, in this virtual world, I'd like be sitting on like 10 Bitcoins right now. It's fucking madness. And then, as if that's not, first of all, I don't know how to spend them. I don't know how to get them. You gotta go to like, someone at this thing called Coinbase, which is how you buy them. And I, they keep shutting down because too many people are trying to buy Bitcoin. The whole thing's run by the Winklevoss twins. Yeah, the Winklevoss twins. Like those two clowns from the Facebook. You think the Winklevoss twins aren't running a scam? I know they're running a scam. Bitcoin is a fucking scam. Can I go buy groceries with it? No. Is it real? Can I hold it? No. How do you find it? People fucking mine for them on the internet? I don't. What does that mean, you mine for them on the internet? It makes no sense. And then when you have it, people act like it's going to be a CIA because people are stealing from you. And then there's no, How do you steal a coin I don't have in the first place? It's not real. Or maybe it is real. It pops out of the top of your computer like Zoolander. Like, oh, the password is in the thing. We've tried to explain it a million times. All I know is this. Everybody's getting rich except me. I want Bitcoin. I can't buy Bitcoin. It's like, hey, Dave, you can buy like fucking $30 of Bitcoin a day. And then you got to wait like three months to somebody, a little internet man, to go mine the internet and find your Bitcoin. And then they'll give like a percentage of it. Yeah, it's all anyone's talking about. I was sitting, waiting for pizza today. There's a homeless girl next to me. Literally, I heard her talking about Bitcoin to her friend. This girl looked like she rolled out of the sewer. She's like, Bitcoin. Go on Instagram stories. Instagram models. Ass, tits, Bitcoin. Screenshots. Literal screenshots. Bitcoin hit 11,000 today. Nate, Nate Dog from the office won't shut up. It's like 20% of his net worth is in Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? Can you buy, like, food with it? Can I go get a pizza and Bitcoin? No. It makes no sense. But I'll tell you this. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and watch everybody get it. I'm getting in on Bitcoin. When they let me, I'll buy my $50 a day. I know it's crash. I know it's Ponzi scheme. I know it's Bernie Madoff. I know all that. I don't care. I, I just want to watch. The, I'd rather Bitcoin's crash and I'm with it just to watch the, the world burn. But I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and watch people mine for imaginary Bitcoins. What is that game I'm talking about? Well, remember everyone's playing it. You walk around, you grab things, and it's like virtual reality i think that's bitcoin we crossed into this fake world there's people with smart brains like me putting money like let me have these bitcoins i don't even know what it is don't know how to buy it i have fake wallets i have numbers i have keys i have this i have that people stealing i watch my back i can't buy them they're being mined the winkle lost twins but i can't get enough of it could you hear it could you hear the classic bubble language in there and I know we're talking about Bitcoin in this example, but it's always the same. I heard about biotech stocks going crazy. I heard about internet stocks going crazy. I remember at the peak of the internet bubble, there was the delivery man from Federal Express who came to my door and started talking to me about stocks. 
I didn't even know this person. And he was telling me all about his stock purchases and how much money he was making. So these are the kinds of things that happen when you are near the peak of a bubble. So again, it's not about Bitcoin. We're talking about signs of the peak of a bubble. What has happened since this time, since this person posted this, and since Bitcoin peaked out at around 17,000? Well, Bitcoin has fallen about 80% in the last year. Uh, one of the other things that was very telling was I was reading articles about how people were literally borrowing on their credit cards to buy Bitcoin. They were borrowing against their mortgage to buy Bitcoin. That is behavior that also happens at the peak of a bubble. So when you have people who want to go into debt to buy this thing that they think is a sure thing, that is bubble behavior because no investment is a sure thing. Every investment has risk. And when something has compounded so quickly, and when you look at a chart, it's just shot up like a rocket straight up north, that is pretty much indicating you're at a blow off point in the bubble. So for people to be saying they were borrowing money, taking loans out wherever they could, throwing any money they could into Bitcoin, that, is, that behavior itself is what is driving the price higher. So it's sort of like, you know, somebody is putting money in because it's going up and then everybody's putting money in because it's going up and then it's going up because it's going up. Do you see? There's no fundamental behind it that is causing it to rise. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the blockchain technology. I think blockchain technology is a huge breakthrough. And I think that there is tremendous potential for blockchain technology. And I think that there are some positives about cryptocurrency. I just feel like it got out of hand. I just feel like it got a little crazy. And I'm also sort of hearing the reverse now. I'm hearing a lot of people talk about the bust, that this is over, that it's never coming back. I'm hearing that kind of talk too. And that's typical at the bottom of a bubble or at a bust. And so I think that it's quite likely that maybe we might be seeing Bitcoin bottom out here and we might see it turn back around again. Now, having said all of that, I'm really, trying to illustrate more about booms and busts than I am about Bitcoin, all right? Because I want you to get the concept of booms and busts because that, knowing that and being able to identify that in the economy is what can actually build you a lot of wealth. If you listen to my podcast where I talked about where the opportunities are for the future, I mentioned that I'm very optimistic about building wealth in the future, about incredible segments of the economy that are new, technology that's new, things that are taking off that are booming. One of those areas that I'm actually very positive about, but wasn't at first and have turned around was literally about the legalization of cannabis. And I wasn't on board with it at first, simply because it had been illegal for so long, it was hard for me to change my thinking about that. But once I learned about CBD oil and the fact that cannabis isn't all about getting high or about being on drugs, which I really cannot get behind, but what I can get behind is the medical use of it. And when I heard the statistics around it curing some different ailments and problems and pains and diseases and things like that, I got very excited. Then when the country of Canada made it legal across the whole country, I got very excited. Then when additional states in the United States started making things legal, I got more excited. So I think that the potential market size for legalized cannabis and what it can do as a medicine and in other segments of the market is really tremendous. And I think that there is a growth market there that could even be bigger than Bitcoin. 
And that takes a lot for me to say that. But I do think that there is tremendous potential there. I'm also still waiting on new technologies to become less expensive and more practical. I'm waiting for the day that flying cars get approved without having to have a pilot's license. And I know that there is a flying car already that doesn't require that. It's just a little bit expensive. I think it's around half a million dollars. So I'm waiting for that to come down. I'm waiting for that whole George Jetson lifestyle. I grew up on that cartoon and I loved it. And uh, we are going into the space age and I can't wait to see the new technologies that come out of this. Technologies for living longer, for looking younger, for feeling better, for curing illnesses, all kinds of things that I think are going to be very, very exciting coming up for us. And so I just wanted to do this podcast to talk about bubbles and cycles, just to give you a little indication of what they look like They basically sound the same, whether it's something about real estate or it's something about a stock or it's something about Bitcoin. They literally sound the same at the top. I hope you got that message. It's more than yay or nay on Bitcoin. We'll see where Bitcoin is a year from now. But one thing I know, you don't want to get into debt to buy a speculative investment. That's never a good idea. And it's something that I want to caution everyone about, no matter what it is that they're telling you, this is some great opportunity. Just be very, very cautious about that. It's better to save your money, create your capital, and use that capital in your investments, do your research, do your study, and approach it like a professional. Approach it like someone who is investing in a business, someone who is you know, actually buying into part of the business. That's how Warren Buffett talks about investing and looks at the numbers, looks at the sales, the profitability, the market share, the market potential, you know, the patents that you have. These are all things that are important to a business. And so you have to look at your investments as if you were investing in a business. And if you do that, that is going to get you very far and probably very rich. My new book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, is getting great reviews by men and women on Amazon. We already sold out on Amazon, so it's on back order there, but I do have a few copies on my website and I will personally autograph it for you. So if you'd like to get it for the holidays, go to lyndapjones.com and pick up your Wealth Heiress book there. We also are having a contest. If you are interested in winning one of 25 prizes, you have a really great chance to win. We have things like my Wealthy Mindset audios that normally sell for $197. I have some autographed copies of my book that I'm giving away and also a one half hour wealth mentoring session with me, which I don't do anymore except during these giveaways. So these are the prizes that you can win. And again, your chances are very good. All you have to do is leave a podcast review and your name would be entered into the hat twice. If you leave a book review, if you got my book somewhere other than Amazon and leave a review on Amazon for the book, that will get your name into the hat three times. And if you bought my book on Amazon and review it on Amazon, that will get your name in the hat five times. But either way, if you do a podcast review and either kind of book review, you'll get your name in the hat 10 times. So again, your odds of winning are very, very good. And I hope that you leave a review and I hope you win. If we haven't yet connected over on Instagram, check out my money tips over at instagram.com forward slash Linda P. Jones. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.